Good morning once again, and welcome to the Baptist Voice. I am your host this morning, Pastor Joseph Hart. I'd like to greet all of our regular listening audience. God bless you. We're glad that you're with us this morning. And for those who are first time tuning in, we welcome you to the program of the Baptist Voice. Today, I'd like for us to take our Bibles and go to the Gospel of John, chapter number 18. The Gospel of John chapter number 18. We're going to be looking today at a subject that I have titled, What is Truth? Now, this phrase I am copying from the very mouth and words of Pilate. In John chapter number 18, verse number 38, we'll give a little bit of an explanation on the background of what we're trying to encourage us in today. And here we find God's Son, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. He is being brought before Pilate. He has been back and forth between a few different leaders, and he finally winds up before Pilate. And as he is being examined before Pilate, Pilate asks Jesus Christ a simple question. What is truth? What is truth? Now, this question is based off the very short and very brief conversation and the time that Pilate had with the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's look at this. John chapter 18, verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would have not delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Now Pilate is talking back and forth, before the Jewish leaders of that day, the high court, uh, the Jewish rulers, and the high priest. Then Pilate um, said unto them in verse number 31, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Now this changed the entire scenario. This was not just a simple judgment that involved a day in jail or a week in jail or maybe five lashes on the back or 10 lashes on the back or some sort of fine that needed to be paid or some sort of restoral of something that was stolen. This particular judgment issue was dealing with death. Now, to part from this particular place, we know that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross as a ransom for you and me. Now, that is the truth. Jesus died on the cross, was buried in a grave, and on the third day, he wonderfully and gloriously rose again, and he is alive today. Now, that, again, is the truth. But the truth of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection, which secures salvation for all mankind, had to go through the means of death, and this is the account of what we're looking for and what we're looking at. When they told Pilate it is not lawful for us to put any man to death, the Bible says in verse 32 that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus. Now we're looking into this brief conversation and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Now for three, three and a half years, there had been a lot of speculation about Jesus Christ being the Messiah the king of the Jews, and on the complete total spectrum of that, there was a lot of accusation that he was a madman, he was a false prophet, he was a devil, and he ought not to be trusted. So Pilate has heard all of these particular rumors and perhaps has discussed them. No doubt his wife did. We find about that. 
in um, another account. But there's no doubt that Pilate would have been very familiar with Jesus Christ, especially when there would have been a mentioning of him being a king, Pilate himself being a man of authority. Now, Jesus responds back to this question that Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it to thee of me? So Pilate is being told by Jesus, Are you seeking the truth? Is this why you're asking me this question? Or are you asking me this question because it's something you have heard? Pilate responds back and says in verse 35, Am I a Jew? And he was not a Jew. He was a Roman. Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? So Pilate is digging into this a little bit. Jesus responds, and once again, all of this deals with the question that Pilate asked in verse 33, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? So he's wanting to get down to this question. Art thou a king then? I mean, if you have people who will fight for you and you have a kingdom, then you must be a king. You must have an army. You must have people that have pled their allegiance unto you and your cause. Well, Jesus answers and said, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Now, that is a very important statement that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Or Jesus is telling Pilate this, everyone that does what I say and listens to what I say, they know something that others don't. That is truth. Pilate saith unto him, and here it is, what is truth. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. And of course, there was a custom that they would release one for a prisoner at the Passover. And we know that Barabbas was released. Barabbas was a robber. He went free. Jesus Christ, the son of God, went to the cross and died. But Pilate again asked, what is truth? I'm going to give you just a few ideas here, biblically speaking, of how to answer this. And of course, we can't answer it with the allotted time. But the truth is, first of all, God. God, our creator, Jehovah. The Bible tells us that it is impossible for God to lie. It's, just, it's impossible. And if it's impossible for God, our creator, to lie, then our God is absolute truth. That means he's perfect. The Bible, the King James Bible, is absolute truth. Jesus Christ is absolute truth. Pilate ends, as we did in verse number 38, this simple discussion, and he says, I find no fault at all in this man. Well, that's right. No man can find fault in Jesus Christ. Nobody today can find fault in Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of people will belittle Jesus Christ and they'll put him down and they'll laugh at the thought of trusting in him, but they have no substance for that. Jesus Christ is the truth. He said in John chapter 14, just a little time before we are in our particular scenario and scene in verse number 38, in chapter 18, where the question is asked, what is truth? Jesus said to his disciples, not to Pilate, but he said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus himself claimed to be truth. He's absolute truth. He's a perfect savior. He can be trusted. His advice is 100% always 
always accurate. The Bible, the King James Bible is truth. Jesus Christ is truth. God is truth. You know, the Bible, speaking of it, we're, we're told not to add to the Bible and nor to take away from the Bible. We're told this over and over and over and over again. The reason that man is not to add or to take away from the Bible is because the Bible is a book of truth. But men have changed the word of God for copyright, for sales reasons. You can't, the King James Bible has no copyright. It is the authentic word of God for today's English speaking people without fault from Genesis to the book of the Revelation. You've heard me mention that on this program many, many, many times. But the fact of the matter is, the word of God is truth. God, our creator, is truth. Jesus Christ is truth. Now, let me just say another thing about this. Where it's right here on our level. Your truth, in the sense of you are a real, functioning human being. You got a mind. You got a will. You got a desire. You can make a choice. You are a free will agent. You have a free will agency. In the sense of the reality of you, it's not that you are truth in the sense of comparing you to Christ, because nobody can be compared unto Christ, but you are a legitimate being, okay? You, according to the Bible, have a body, soul, and a spirit. Now, that's the truth of you. The truth of you is you never die. You will spend eternity with God in heaven, or based on your personal choices, you will spend eternity in hell, eternally separated from God based on your choice. Not God's choice, not your neighbor's choice, based on your choice. So the truth is you are a legitimate human being. You have a free will agency. You can think, you can talk, you can act, you can defend, you can promote. You can choose. You can think. This is all true characteristics and attributes that make up some of who we are. And again, we have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. Now, the truth of us is this. <clears throat> we don't live forever. The truth is, the Bible says, because of sin living within us, we are depraved, as we talked about last week, and because of the nature of depravity, sooner or later, we lose our life. Now, is that not the truth? That is the truth. Sooner or later, we lose our life. No man listening unto me can live forever. He, he might be able to be preserved and frozen and looked at every day by a spouse on a certain um, um, scientific research study and money or whatever the case may be, but there's no life there. There's no life there. I know we can look at a picture for years and years and years and years. That picture is a wonderful thing when it comes to memory. But that picture is not the real animated life of the individual. The, the fact of the matter is the truth of the matter is this. We all sooner or later are going to leave. So let me just bring this into a place and show you something. God is truth according to the Bible the Bible is truth according to the Bible. Jesus Christ is truth according to the Bible. You are a real individual, a real human being. You have a free will and ability to choose, reject, and accept. That's the truth. And you one day will expire. You are going to be no more and your life will cease. That is the truth. Now, this past week, most of us listening this morning probably watched the so-called debate. And I have my opinions about it, and I think my opinions are right in the sense of my personal convictions, and I'm sure you have yours. But can I tell you something about the question that Pilate asked? Again, Pilate asked, what is truth? Now listen carefully to this quote. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to to help people, you tell them the truth. Now, let's stop. Did Jesus Christ come to help people? Yes. Did Jesus Christ love people? Yes. Did Jesus Christ reject anybody? No. He said, come unto me all ye that labor, and I'll give you rest. Burdened. 
Did Jesus Christ have compassion on everybody? Yes. Did Jesus Christ die for the sin of every man and every woman? Yes. And Jesus is the truth. He said he was the truth. Again, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you want to help people, listen, you tell them the truth. Jesus Christ spoke the truth. When they went to arrest him, that is, Jewish officials who were sent by the high priest and the high court, these officials, which we may call police officers, did not arrest him. And when he came back, they said, where is he at? And they said, we didn't arrest him. They said, why didn't you arrest him? And the summary of their explanation of why they didn't arrest him was this. We've never heard a man speak like this man. What they were telling the authorities that sent them on his mission is this. I think you got something wrong with your judgment about who this man is because we've never heard a man talk like this man. You know what that means? His words were truth, and truth has an ability to convict and cut. Now, the word of God is referred to as a sword. A sword can cut, and the word of God is referred to as a cutting sword. It divides a sonder between your soul and your spirit. Jesus Christ came to help people. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. Now watch, when you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. And that's exactly what you seen the other night with a so-called debate. You heard one man telling the truth. Gas is, is extremely high. It's going to go down as the elections get closer and closer. That's the card they play. A dozen of eggs, extremely high. Milk, extremely high. Steak, no one's buying it, extremely high. You want a dinner, you want to go to Bob Evans, be prepared to wait 45 minutes. They can't get no help. You want to go to Kroger's and you want to get some quick help, be prepared to wait a little while. Uh, They're going to be lacking cashiers and you're probably going to have to use the automated ones. Oh, and by the way, it's the same way at Walmart. The Walmart is very low on their help. And what I'm getting at is our economy, our country is, is, <laughs> it speaks for itself. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. And all we heard the other night was one side telling us the truth about our country, about inflation being at an all-time high, interest rates at an all-time high, unemployment rate. I don't know where these numbers come from, but I can go to Taco Bell and ask them. I can go to Walmart and ask him. I ask at Kroger's. I ask at Lowe's. I ask these questions all the time, okay? Now, when you want to help yourself, you tell people what they want to hear. And we've seen the truth being presented about an open border, about inflation at an all-time high, about the crippling and the weakening weakening and the weakness of our nation currently. And then you hear another side, which is telling people what they want to hear. And the reason that the one side was telling people or at least projecting something about what the people want to hear is so they can get helped out for their personal agenda. It's always been this way. Now, again, I'm going to quote this. I don't want to wear this out with you, but listen. When you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. And that's exactly what you witnessed the other night. That's where our country's at. But look. It's always been like this. This is not anything new under the sun. It's just that most people can't embrace what's really taking place. Now, when it comes to the truth, the truth, there are people that are searching for it, like Pilate. Pilate asked Jesus the question, what is truth? Was he searching for truth? I believe to some extent he was at least curious on his opinion. That is, Pilate was curious on the opinion of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning what he thought truth was or what truth is. And a lot of people today are seeking answers. They're not just seeking thoughts and philosophies and ideas. They're seeking truth. And they'll hear something that works for a little while, and then they move on. Then they'll hear something that works for a little while, then they move on. Then they hear something that works for a little while, and they move on. And looking back Throughout their life, they can find they've never found what they were really looking for. So there are a lot of people searching for the truth. People will do very odd things. 
people will do extreme things to find what they have been told the truth is. There are those searching to the fact as in comparison to Pilate. There were other people that came to Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, and they were searching the truth. And then there is trusting the truth. Now watch, when you want to help people, you tell them the truth. And the problem with that is the very help that the majority of people need today that is fountained and from truth, people don't want to hear. So that reality of being helped goes undone. And the deception comes in by them getting told what they want to hear, helping somebody else and really not that particular individual. There are those that are trusting the truth. Jesus said this in John chapter 8. Remember, as he was talking to those who had put their faith and trust in him, starting at verse 32, he says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And he was talking to those who believed on him. So believing on Jesus Christ is trusting the truth and finding the truth. Jesus is the truth. Let me back up to verse 31 of chapter 8 of the Gospel of John. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now they responded and said unto him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but now watch this, because, but ye seek to kill me because my word, which is truth, hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Now their father, he had told them, was the devil. Verse 39, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. That was not the truth. Abraham was not the father of them, and Jesus mentions that. Not spiritually. Physically, yes. Spiritually, no. Jesus saith unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, then ye would do the works of Abraham. What was the works of Abraham? He believed in God, and righteousness was imputed unto him. But listen to verse 40. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. You see how the majority of people deal with truth? Jesus says again, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Now, Trusting in Jesus Christ, we believe that we are created, as Christ mentions and reveals throughout Scripture, we are created by the Most High God. You have been created in the very image and likeness of God. And the only way that you and I can be fixed or humanity can be fixed is by the great fixer or the great physician. And the great fixer or the great physician is the truth. And the truth was embodied in the person of God's Son, Jesus Christ, which if that truth, that is the truth of Jesus Christ, which is the only truth, if it's going to be embraced and if it's going to fix our lives and change our lives, he's got to be trusted. There's got to be belief in his death, his burial, his resurrection, his word. There's got to be belief. There's got to be a faith. And this is key, and this is necessary for truth to do its work in your life. Now, many people don't want to hear the truth. Again, I want to help you. I tell people the truth. I try to speak the truth. I'm not interested in helping myself because the fact of the matter is, my help, as the psalmist says, cometh from the Lord. I don't want to help myself by telling you something you want to hear. That doesn't help me. In reality, it does not help me. Again, when you want to help people, you tell them the truth. When you want to help yourself, you tell them what they want to hear. There are those searching for the truth. What is truth? There are those who are trusting truth, and that is Jesus Christ. And then there are those who are on purpose rejecting the truth, 
rejecting the truth. And whenever you get around people who are rejecting truth, you can believe one thing. They are trying to help themselves by telling you whatever it is you want to hear. That's the truth of that matter. Now, listen to what Paul said as we conclude in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He says in verse number 3, listen carefully. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. By the way, sound doctrine is truth. But after their own lust, what they want, shall they heap to themselves having itching ears. Again, when you want to help yourself, you tell people what they want to hear. Paul says this is going to be the major influence in the last days. You need to be wise about this as a believer. I need to be wise about this as a preacher and a believer. We need to be underneath a biblical, fundamental, rightly divided preaching truth. Yes, it's not going to go well with you at all times. Yes, it may um, upset you to the point like the Pharisees were wanting to kill the Lord, and they did. They did. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now watch, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Now, that's in the secular world. Oh, I don't go to church. Don't preach to me. I don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. They turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned into fables. And and, and this is the majority of humanity today. We just witnessed this the other night on national television. You think about what I'm telling you, then you go back and watch that. All right, now. People rejecting the truth. Paul says the time is going to come when people will turn away their ears from the truth. But there are some, once again, who embrace the truth. So people reject the truth. What do people and why do people reject truth? For humanistic ideas. It sounds good. Man, if it could ever be a reality. I kind of like what President Trump said to his opponent, and once again, I'm not partial. I'm just trying to look out for the best of our country. No matter if it's a woman or a man, I'm just looking out for what's the best for our country. But I do like what the president, Trump, ended with. And he says, you've promised this, you've promised that. You said this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. You've had three and a half years to do it, and you've not done none of it. What does that tell me and you? What does that tell us? In the, in the secular world, what does that tell us? What does that tell us in the spiritual world? Truth is rejected because of humanistic ideas, personal ideas, ideas of others. And when the truth is rejected, you can believe we're going to have a platform where people are going to tell you what you want to hear and not what you need to help you. Now, God have mercy on our country, our pastors who labor in the word, who compromise with biblical truth and preaching. All they are trying to do is help themselves by building a church. You don't have to do that here. You don't have to wear that here. You don't have, we don't believe that here. Come on in. It don't matter what you do. It don't matter what you say. It don't matter your lifestyle. It don't matter how you want to approach um, the sexual matters. It doesn't matter who you're married to. It doesn't even matter if you're married. We're hearing a lot of this today in our churches. This is, that isn't the truth. These are mere preachers telling people what they want to hear so that they can be helped with who they are. Truth doesn't support that. Truth is against that. And when somebody like myself or other men like myself preach the truth, we're looked at as narrow-minded. We're looked at as haters. We're looked at as people who have no compassion. We're looked at as people who have no common sense. We're looked at as people who are not where the common people are. And all that is, once again, is an alleviation, fundamental truth of leaving the truth. All it is, is it's a a fundamental type of, of 
elevating above and beyond or sinking below where the truth needs to be at. What is the truth? The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is God. The truth is our King James Bible. The truth is you and me need God. The truth is our country needs God. The truth is Jesus is the only way. He is the only hope. He is the great physician. The truth is we have no hope in nobody else. The truth is unless God gives us a revival, we're never going to get anywhere based on the mere philosophies of men telling us what we want to hear so they can help themselves. What is the truth? The truth is in Jesus Christ. May God bless you and may God bless America.